Hey y'all, thank y'all for showing interest in the video. If you like it, please like and subscribe. Have a great rest of the day. I see a train a coming. I've seen sunshine. I don't know where. <laughs> So those cords right over there, the one right there? Yeah, that box. That's what the passenger trains would connect to for yeah, the power. All the power and stuff. When they were sitting here, and also uh, these boxes that were, uh, I think, were for sewer dump. For sewer dump. I think. Okay. National Company. Right here. The two platforms that we walk them are here. Yeah, this would be a second platform. And these, this thing here is where the, the, uh, the, the stands that held up the roof because it had a cover. So it had a, you know, the platform has a roof over it. It keeps the passenger dry. Well, that is pretty cool to have like little, to think that there was like a little passenger hangout here. Yeah, I mean, we're so busy, they required enough to have multiple things for multiple trains to be parked here. This is for the, the water to drain down. You had the main beam here and held up the, the roof, the uh, covering, and then you had the water drain for the rainwater. Okay. Huh. And yeah, it's clean out there in case it gets clogged up. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That screeching noise reminds me of one of my ex-girlfriends. <laughs> I didn't just say that out loud, did I? <laughs> so this is a self-propelled little train cart thing, whatever you want to call it. Philosophied. Uh, for those that are interested in knowing. So, number one, that one's right there. That is a railroad telegrapher. That uh, describes a little pamphlet that describes <coughs> the rules and regulations. Mm -hmm. The pamphlet that you got to use it. You needed to be successful, rule, rule abiding telegrapher. Well, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And then number two, right there, is the Seaboard Airline Railway Station record of train movements. Uh, it's used to various, used to describe various movements of trains. Anyone know what the crew is, when they started, when they got off? where the train was located or parked at, where it started and ended. Hmm. Yeah. Because back then, you know, they, they, you know, today you have satellite positioning, but then they had to manually keep track of where trains were at, keep them from running <coughs> each other. That'd be pretty scary. 
mean, it happens. I mean, even today, you know, they run into usually it's cause somebody doesn't get a switch right or something malfunctions on it. And then, I, I mean, how would they be able to switch the trains though? Huh? Would they have to manually switch it nowadays, or was it oh, still? Oh, all the main lines, even back then. Oh, well, they've had automatic switching for a, a number of years. Uh, I don't know how far back you go uh, when they started automatic switching, but it probably had to go back in the 50s. And you ha you you still have like the boxes you see by the train tracks. There'd be a box near a switch, and you'd have a uh, a motor that would switch the tracks and send back a signal that the track had been switched. And you do it from remote. And that started probably about the 1950s or maybe even sooner. And, it's, and particularly in big bit areas, you'd have a yard. All that would have to be. Now before that, before they had all electrical, uh, were able to turn switches electrically, you had to have somebody go out in the yard and turn each switch. Or you'd have a manual lever that would. Uh, that would be free supposedly down somewhere, they had trained, some guy had trained a monkey to know when to flip the switches. He'd go oh, out gosh. and pull the right switch to direct the train where it needed to go. Wow, well, that's crazy. Not a quarter rack. So, yeah, he's yeah, right, right here. Remember, but, uh, he's right here on uh, train hoops right here. I like described in this picture here, guys holding one of these. They would use that to pass notes to trains to where technically the train wouldn't have to stop. So they would use these to kind of catch the notes or whatever in sorts. So that was pretty cool to learn. So that right there is a bonding drill. Uh, it's kind of a hand crank drill that was used for uh, drilling through metal rails and all that stuff to create pin and spike poles, spike holes and stuff. Um, then the object right there, number five, is a large adjustable wrench, obviously. It's kind of self-explanatory. Um, the one right there, six, is a alligator wrench, as they'd call it. Um, it was kind of a specialized wrench, from my understanding. Um, you know, because of its, you know, also got its name because of its teeth and all that stuff. Um, kind of looked like alligator teeth, I guess, from what they've said. Um, um, and then, let me see. And then, let's see if I can try to find some of the stuff around here. But, uh, we got one, our present, that's not present, like on Sunday. It's about to make the air of the moment. And then it went back to Sunday. Oh, all right. Back to the one. Okay. The tool right there, number 13, is a spike mall. Um, spike malls are large hammers. Um, you know, for driving in spikes and all that stuff. Um, and then the one right there is a rail chisel. Uh, which, uh, used the days before high powered saws and blow torches. Huh, cut through metal. Hmm, cool. Of course. Anyone know how to identify that? The whistle. Where's the whistle? It's that sign over there. That's the whistle. stripes and it and then dot. It okay. almost like Morse codes. You know. Line, line, dot, line. So long, long, short, long. And that was their crossing signals. And trains still do that. They're smoke, or normally would do that. You go, da, 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 da. You know, so yeah. two, two long, one short, along. And that was the standard for a crossing to train to alert people. Hmm. Cool little toolboxes. That was like from Mel or something. 
I'm sure they were better at sorting mail back then than they are now. Cool little trains though. This is the, the roundhouse. This is the roundhouse right yeah. here. And uh, any other little it's cool things? Track. Pretty much change, uh, changes the uh, trains and the different track and all that cool. Yep. And then, huh. um, I like this little church scene right here. I'm always trying to figure out what it is. So whenever like someone comes that might know, I try to ask them. But there's clearly a cop right there, right? Like there's a little cop figurine. and people pointing, and I can't quite figure out what they're doing, but that fascinates me. Does this one do anything? Yes, one of them will work from that. I'm not sure which one that is, though. Let's see. This train right here is supposed to move. Oh, it's this one, I think, right back there, maybe? Hmm. And the difference between people who do toy trains and model, model railroading is about the detail and adding little, little things like sometimes they'll go in and you can look inside the storefronts and they'll have decorated the inside of the store yes. and then lighting. We have one over there that like um, the inside of the train is decorated that you can see pretty well yeah. and um, that one's... Yeah, see, this, yeah, right here, you're so close and you can see they decorated the, the car, the car yeah. audio bay and things like that. There are people inside doing work to the car. Station there. This is 87 times smaller than the actual way of the camera. So, kind of what it's Now, what time period does the HA scale? Now, what time period does this take? Uh, does this setup take place in? It's supposed to probably be in the 50s. 50s? Yeah, 50s. 50s. Yeah, 52 Hamlet. 1952 Hamlet is yeah. what this takes the, place the only, in. The only thing is, I mean, I have, have it reversed. So you see where the depot is at? And I showed you the subway that used to be. The depot right there? Uh, yep. I have old photos and with the uh, subway still standing. Oh my God, that's so cool. Uh, I'd like to have a little, huh? I'd like to have, have a little the house tunnel, over here. The tunnel's so cool. Yeah. And in my house right there. In, you, I mean, they had a door lock and you could look downstairs and I was probably a teenager at that point. Oh. And probably by the time, uh, 80s, 80s and 90s, I think. So we've got another train going. Down. Oh, so no more trains. The, uh, awning for the cover. Oh. So the cover used to be all the way up. I'm thinking there. I'm thinking of the CSA. Yeah, we'll go back to the show in here in a second. What y'all got about a look at everything? We used to have the, the video of the very long one, how they moved it. Cool little. The hotel is right. This one, right across from that Coca Cola building, it's right across from it. That was a hotel that burned down. Oh, God, I'm not from Hamlet, so it's harder. I think the early 90s. But, um, you know, I give a tour, right? And yeah. I start telling them about the history. Well, the really, yeah, I think the, the one, the, the, the T-board was actually. Like, Burned down a long time ago. Oh, that was a long time ago, yes. The Terminal Hotel is the more recent burned yeah. down, but Seaboard, yeah, that was a while ago. That was the more elegant one. Yeah. <laughs> this one ended up being used for uh, people who are struggling. Yeah. Down struggling. Their luck. But uh, <laughs> it, it basically it burned down. A, a guy was smoking and the, just the sheet caught on fire and the yeah. whole thing burned. Well, that's what worked happened with a few depots up where we live. The okay. depots almost got in there, and, and in the wintertime, they tried to start a fire and burn down the, oh, God. the place. <laughs> And the tornado building's open? Yep, the tornado's open. Mm -hmm. And that was our thing. Yes. Yeah, car stove. Um, 
right here. Hey, of course, too. And eating cabooses. And probably, yeah, they would cook on it and everything. Mm -hmm. Now, this may be a coal fire versus wood fire. Because okay. you had two different types we would use. And I imagine being that coal was probably relatively available, it yeah. probably was a like coal fired uh, stove. Hmm. And we have uh, a neighbor had one of those in their shop, and it full, full of coal and it's cherry red in the winter. Oh. That's pretty. All clear. These are railroad tongs, um, or cross tie tongs uh, that were used for to set the cross ties in place. It's pretty really cool. I've actually used a typewriter before. Yeah, one thing I took in school because I was using computers. I wanted to do keyboarding. I know my dad used one. Hope he doesn't. Hope he doesn't get offended. <laughs> hmm. See, this is the tornado, an early steam engine. Here's some doodles. This is Lionel or O gauge. A little helicopter over there. There's some GG1s in there, Yuri. Look at this old antique. So, this is the tornado. Yeah. Hmm. Sure. 